This goes beyond pro wrestling. This is evolutionary. Well, that's just like your opinion, Nigel. I'm John Rickton with my review of AEW Full Gear 2023. From the Kia Forum, 11 to 12,000 people according to WrestleTix. I have a lot to say. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. And am I going to say positive stuff, negative stuff, anything in between? Am I going to rage? Am I going to go absolutely happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy? Well, let's get to it. So, yeah, for the Zero Hour, Shivani and Excalibur on commentary, and a Munchkin join on commentary for the Ring of Honor World Championship match. Oh, wait, that's Stokely Hathaway, and I'm sorry, Munchkins at least had the excuse of it being short. Stokely just is minute. He's so goddamn minute, and he literally sounds like, from now on, you'll be history, you'll be history, you'll be history, you'll be history. He's a hell of a talker, and I know he helps run Ring of Honor <laughs> as an authority figure. Eddie Kingston versus Jay Lethal with Team TNA, and look, I get that Jay Lethal's a heel, I get that you want to have the numbers advantage, but given the amount of interference and bullshit that we would have on this particular show, this is not the best start. Give me Jay Lethal and Eddie Kingston in a hard-hitting match with some a few shenanigans, maybe like one little interference spot, and then <coughs> like Sanjay's caught and kicked out, and then you go back to the match and you have this, but no, you have this constant bullshit, why is Karen Jarrett still there? Get out of here. You never belong. You are not worthy of being on a goddamn wrestling program. She never has been. The only reason that she has been involved in wrestling is because of who she married. That's it. And I'd say the same damn thing if she was a talent and Jeff Jarrett was somebody that just was riding her coattails. <laughs> uh, Ortiz showed up, hit Sanjay with the guitar, Eddie won. I hope for a serious, hard-hitting match between these two another time, but I don't think we're going to get that. We're probably going to get... Um, Ortiz versus Eddie for the Ring of Honor Championship. It's going to be the Backfits versus the Cocksock. So, then Renee looks great. Claudio took on Buddy Matthews in a hard-hitting match where swing whenever, swing whenever, swing, do 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 um, Buddy is quite good, very powerful, and very agile for his size. <laughs> Hit a jackhammer into a crossface. The recola bomb, and then we get a sharpshooter. Buddy tries to fight to the ropes, but gets pulled back, taps out. There you go. Good stuff. Could have been on Dynamite. It is what it is. We didn't get a handshake. Oh no, the Blackpool Combat Club announced the Black Nerd. They will not meet yet. They will not shake the hands. <sighs> Video package on the six-man tag. MJF and Samoa Joe versus the Guns. Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship match. Adam Cole showed up during this. The referee forgot to enforce the goddamn tag rules. Let me just say, stop making your referees look like idiots. Otherwise, <laughs> some fans can overlook the shenanigans. Unfortunately, across multiple wrestling companies, they make the referees look foolish, <coughs> which is stupid, especially in New Japan. They make the referees seem like, hey, oh yeah, you can just do anything besides shoot somebody outside the ring, and it's totally goddamn fine. Yes, you can overlook some things, let some things go, if things are personal, but you don't want to do DQs, no contests. I get that, I get that, but goddamn it, stop making your referees seem like they, like they don't have any eyes. Seriously. Anyway, yeah, Adam Cole was around, did a distraction, and then we got the clutch, and that won it, and then MJF shook uh, Joe's hand. We're getting that match. MJF better win tonight, but oh, ho, ho, the gun's attacking Pillman eyes, MJF's ankle and knee and everything, and oh, my God, he's a man with no ankle. He's going to work a main event match, shrieking Kerry Von Erich noises. And they stretcher him to an ambulance. He says to Adam Cole, please don't let them take my championship. Don't take him, I love him. <sighs> so, yeah, then we um, have a package on the main matches heading into the actual pay-per-view. That was it for the zero hour, by the way. Um, main show starts pyro and recaps of the MJF stuff. <laughs> and, look, I understand wanting to give everybody as much as possible with these matches and everything. We had the zero hour, and by the time this whole event ended, it was every bit of four hours for the main show. That's five hours for 11 matches. They could have easily cut five minutes off of a few of these matches. They could have cut easily seven to ten minutes off of a couple. We could have been done a half hour early. Anyway, so there's a kids' choir for Christian's entrance. That kind of makes sense. You know what, the kid, the, whatever, hopefully the kids had fun. Flair makes his entrance. He has no idea where the hell he's at. And the Woo Energy Drink. I'm going to tell you right now, I read up about that. There is no goddamn way I'm ever going to try that shit. Um, anyway, so the faces are in face paint. Aha, I see what I did there. That was unintentional. So Flair's in the corner of Sting, Darby, and Adam Copeland against Christian, Nick Wayne, and Luchasaurus. 
Ric Flair looking at Luchasaurus like, God damn, this reminds me of my youth. If you get it, you get it. Nick Wayne was having a blast getting to be there with all these legends and what was left of Ric Flair. Steve-O was still alive, much to my chagrin. Um, all the jackass people were morons. Just want to say that right now. You injure yourself, you do that stuff intentionally, you're fucking idiots. <laughs> Who's your daddy, chance? And the crowd was into this. See, initially the crowd was actually into a lot of this stuff, and then they kind of warmed down. Um, Luchasaurus, he's fine in short bursts, but he's as good as he's ever going to get. He really hasn't evolved much beyond when I saw him at some Defy shows. He's not awful, but he is much, much better in matches like this. Darby just hitting the apron hard, Nick having a goddamn blast mocking Ric Flair's strut. <laughs> and then we just, everybody just takes turns uh, diving after, um, well, Darby mainly dies because Darby's found determined to not walk by the age of 35. He ain't going to make it even a quarter of the way up Mount Everest if he keeps doing this shit. And he probably shouldn't even attempt to do that. Anyway, this kept going. Flair got involved. Somehow, no DQ. He got hit with a low blow, assuming Ric Flair can actually feel anything down there at this point at 73 million years old. And then Luchasaurus got hit in the face. Ow, my mask. Anybody gets that Space Mutiny reference? I love you guys. <laughs> Luchasaurus gets pinned. During this time, Christian took off. That being said, not bad. Not bad. It was a fine match. It probably could open Dynamite or Main Event Dynamite. And it would have been fine. But you know what? For a pay-per-view... For Sting's last match, apparently in California, this is Sting's last fucking wrestling match in, or last re last fucking time wrestling in California. Make some fucking noise, Darby says. Sting, Sting, thank you, Sting, thank you, Sting. And you know what? <coughs> Good on Sting. He's getting the send off. He was happy. And then Shivani is with Bryce, and the decision's been made that oh my god, MJF cannot compete. And then uh, the leader of the Gang Bang Gang, Jay White, comes out, and. Cole comes out again and says, oh, if MJF can't compete, I literally had to have surgery on my ankle recently, but I'll compete in a walking boot and crutches. That's safe. Tony Khan says that's okay. And based on some of the decisions that Tony Khan made uh, for the rest of this pay-per-view, I'm not surprised he would have okayed that. I get what they were going for here, but I'll get to why I had my opinions on a bit. So, speaking of opinions, Orange Cassidy against John Moxley for the International Incident Championship. Orange Cassidy won. So, anyway, we just move on. I'm not going to pay attention to any of this stuff because I didn't care for the match that they had at all out. And those who like Orange Cassidy and Mox and like this match, fine. I didn't. So, yet yeah, Yuta wants to face off against Cassidy at some point. Mark Briscoe is in the Continental Classic. Good for him. And Timeless Tony Storm makes her entrance, and Sheeta and Tony Storm had a match where Sheeta looks great, Tony Storm looks great, no idea why Luther is still there as an on-screen character, and Referee Aubrey. And okay, they laid shit in. Tony's chest was still red from wrestling, uh, in quotations, Emmy Sakura. And the crowd loved Tony. And Mariah May was watching backstage as the stalker angle goes on. Knee focus by Tony. There was some good stuff here. Unfortunately, they couldn't stick the landing. Why couldn't they stick the landing? Because of how the camera was shooting stuff and also how they made the referee. Referee Aubrey. Her and Red Shoes, my two favorite referees going today on main in main in main companies. Because there are plenty of cool referees on the indies, just in case any of them happen to be watching this. But the shoe gets involved, and then she has this piece of metal that's like a powder thing or whatever that you, you know, you pay, you take the powder and the makeup and you do this and everything. And I felt like doing that. I think a lot of powder was used by somebody in a position of power based on how this uh, show went. But anyway, an ankle log, they were cooking here and <laughs> Aubrey failed to see that the plate, the metal plate was in Tony's tights and sticking out. And I know they didn't want to have it sticking too much in because they didn't want to have the metal piece jut into Tony and bust her skin and bust her open. I'm not against that, but if you can't do it right, don't do the fucking spot. She did the spot where she did the, you know, the butt bump in the corner and pinned Sheeta. And I don't have a problem with Tony winning, but everybody in this in alternate universes saw that goddamn metal piece. Aubrey would have had to have been totally goddamn blind to not see that. 
And that just completely killed it. I mean, great for Tony. I feel bad for Sheeta because they keep giving, they've given her two title reigns that really haven't lasted all that long after her first title reign. Went a while, but then, you know, it was mostly during the pandemic and she barely got to wrestle in front of, like, any sizable crowds until she lost it at, I believe, Double or Nothing, if I remember right. Was it Double or Nothing 2021? I think it was. But, yeah, good on, good on Tony, but Jesus. <laughs> this was just ridiculous. And then, and then Mariah comes out and, you know, shows that she deflowered herself for Tony. I think I said that right. Renee is with Eddie. Eddie's in the Continental Classic and is putting up the New Japan Strong and the Ring of Honor World Championships. And whoever beats him gets the championships. So he's going to run the table and get to the finals and then somebody's going to beat him for them. And also, apparently, he said, unless this was a slip-up, the Continental Classic is actually going to be a championship. So, okay, let's, let's go through this. World Championship, International Championship, TBS Women's Championship, um... TNT Championship, we have the tag titles, we have the six-man titles, we have the Ring of Honor Women's Championship, we have the Ring of Honor World Championship, we have the TV Championship, we have the Pure Championship, we have the six-man championship, we have the tag team championships, if I didn't already mention that, and then we have titles from Japan that are being defended. U.S., U.K., whatever the hell they're going to come up with now. Maybe an Intercontinental Championship, but New Japan wouldn't be stupid enough to, you know, screw something up like that. Oh, they did! And then other championships. The Owen Hart belts from the Owen Hart Memorial Tournament. Or whatever the hell they're calling it. And now they got this. Quit adding championships. Jesus Christ, Tony Khan's just Herb Abrams with a billion dollars. Good goddamn Christ. You don't need... Have it be a trophy. Have it be a trophy. That's fine. You don't need to make another belt. You don't need to have this be an actual championship. I'm hoping it was a slip-up by Eddie, but I fear it wasn't. And good on Eddie. I hope he has a good run in the tournament. <sighs> FTR versus Rush and Drillistico versus the Kings of the Brack Throne. You know Mother. That's uh, Malachi Black and Brody. Woo, 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 King. And Starks and Bog Bill. Again, the shoe print on the shirt. Sorry. Can't unsee it. This would have been better as a four-way elimination match, and you could have just had it come down to two teams and everything, or you could have just had it be chaotic, and it would have made sense. But no, let's just add a ladder match stipulation for that. Why? Because we need to just add ladders to everything. And I wouldn't have had a problem with this being a ladder match, except there have been so many ladder matches on WWE television, AEW television, <laughs> and pay-per-views in general. And even if they eased off on a couple of them, you know, a couple stipulations lately. They did so many of them for so long in, in such frequency that it doesn't mean anything. They were taking bumps. They were hurting themselves. Brody got gashed and all that stuff and everything. They were taking all of these bumps in a match that nobody's going to remember in three fucking days. I'm not going to remember this match in three fucking days. <laughs> I love FTR. I sense a car wreck coming is what I wrote down, and it was. And meeting of the meat, if it's between Brody and Bog Bill. Six men, you know, six men within gripping distance was a line uttered by Excalibur. Um, a pile driver on the ladder, a, or was it that Dante's Inferno? I don't remember what the hell it is. Brody was bleeding. This will not end. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It was the Gonzo Bomb that he hit and if everybody just was taking all taking all these bombs after the gonzo bomb i wrote this is fitting because this show is booked like it by an actual goddamn muppet this is just what i gotta say right now about this goddamn fiasco and here's the thing i didn't hate this show by this point i was just getting annoyed because again you can do matches like this if you actually build them up Yes, these teams have interacted with each other a little bit, but to just immediately go to a ladder match, you could have just done this on television for Winter is Coming. It probably would have fit better there because you would have given us a little bit more of a build. But everyone does stupid shit. They were hurting themselves. I imagine a lot of these people are really sore. I hope Brody's all right. Starks and Bog won. 
Moving on to a match that really surprised me. Chris Statlander versus Julia Hart, a.k.a. Phoebe Nix. Shout out to Skinny Mysterio for that. Thank you, Taryn. Phoebe Nix is now forever her name. And Sky Blue in a TBS three-way. And this had the second most amount of choking between three women in a three-way that I've seen on camera. You don't want to know about the first. Or you do, but always delete your search history. Stadlander used her power and her agility. <coughs> well, Julian Sky used spookiness. And I would say used, but I don't think Stadlander's that old. So, I mean, these are all three young women. Stadlander clearly was the one that's been wrestling the longest, I believe. And so, Julian Sky, <coughs> who's more evil? Who's more spooky? It sounds like I'm taking the piss out of this match. And look, at first the crowd was exhausted probably because of the ladder match and also just because of how they've been trained to feel about the women i want to say this this might have actually turned out to be one of the best matches of the night if not right up there for this reason it was expedient it was over in about 12 minutes and they did well were there botches were there flummoxes sure am I, is this going to be on one of my is this going to be on my favorite matches of the year list no but that's no knock against the women i appreciated this um Stadlander just, you know, showing off with some great strength and everything. We got a code blue. She was, you know, everybody was fired up. Julia, you know, <coughs> Julia attacking, Sky attacking. Boom, boom, boom. They're getting some good shots in. Saturday Night Fever and Broken Up and Julia covers Sky. One, two, three. Big pop. Julia Hart is now the TBS championship. Good for her. Recently got married. After losing to Statlander at Wrestle Dream, which I was at, and came back, won here. Statlander had almost a six month run as champion. Now she can go after Tony Storm. She can go after Athena. <clears throat> I do want to quickly mention speaking of Athena, Ronda Rousey signed to Ring of Honor, apparently, if not just for a few appearances, possibly for a little bit longer. <sighs> just what they need a Sandy Hook conspiracist um, and Sandy Hook denier on the goddamn thing. Well, then again, she'll fit in just fine with some of the people there. That being said, look, you know, Tony Khan's paying all that money for her, for somebody whose best year ended in 2019. We're coming up almost five years since Ronda's best run in wrestling ended. <clears throat> because she didn't do anything good in her second run in WWE. She didn't do shit. She didn't want to be there. Fans didn't want her back. And I don't know if this is going to boost Ring of Honor. I mean, it might take it from here to here. So they might get like 100 more subscribers. So anyway, Julia, new TBS champion. Good stuff. I'm not going to say I'm going to sit and rave about it. Beyond good stuff. And they worked well together. Even with some issues. Shivani then says, here's the big signing. It's Will Ospreay. I'll be here soon, bruv, but I'm all elite, bruv. And he's got to finish the stuff in New Japan. He's at least going to go through Wrestle Kingdom. I think he might be at, I don't know if his contract ends at the beginning of February or something. He might work the new beginning of Osaka show if they're still doing that in, you know, early February. He's definitely going to work Wrestle Kingdom. He's going to work some of the tours after that. But you know what? He did everything he could in New Japan. Osprey is, he's got, he's got bird shit in his head as far as his brains and everything, for the spots and for some of the stuff that he's done in the past, not giving merch to fans and everything and asking them to help out and, you know, help out family members and not really come through on stuff and other things. But no denying, Osprey is talented, and he's going to get a lot of attention. So there you go. So, <coughs> we then get Swerve's theme, and Nana has dancers, and he swerves when he drives, 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 and that's all I got. That's all I got right there. Dancers look good. They look very good. Swerve comes out just like, what the fuck am I doing here? And boy, did I end up asking that a little bit later. <laughs> Hangman doesn't even make his entrance. He jumps on Swerve, immediately runs down, no music, no whatever, Jumps on him, Texas Deathmatch, submit or knockout. Now, the original Texas Deathmatch, by the way, going back to Dory Funk Sr. Or Dory Funk, because there was no senior at the time. Unlimited falls. If you can't answer a 10 count, I believe, I think if you can't answer a 10 count, then you're done. Okay, and some of them went on an hour or two hours or whatever, and they did. We don't need that. 
And yes, some Texas death matches have gotten to where weapons have been involved. And I want to say right now, this is actually the match I was looking most forward to. And I will explain why. I love Swerve. I've loved Swerve in many matches. I've seen him in great matches live. And him versus Hangman at Wrestle Dream was fantastic. Great stuff. Sure, maybe a few too many near falls, but still, one of my favorite matches of the goddamn year. Not just because I got to see it live, but kind of also peaked it up a little bit. So, we then get this. After Swerve has, you know, invaded his home, Hangman has sought revenge, building up, even if I didn't, even if I thought the home invasion stuff was a little bit goofy. Hangman fired up on Dynamite. They were building this thing fine. They were cooking. They built this wall. Swerve versus Hangman 2. Texas Deathmatch. I don't like the AEW version of Texas Deathmatch. I don't like the New Japan version of like these kind of matches because to me, it is less about telling a story and more about just how can we do such stupid shit. I mean, look at what Lance Archer and Mox did. And I believe Mox and Hangman did. And other... Other people. Also, I find it funny that Hangman is involved in a Texas death match when he's from Virginia. And last time I checked, Virginia is nowhere near Texas. I'm not saying that he's not into cowboy shit, cowboy shit, cowboy shit. So, Hangman jump starts. First, punching him down, everything. He's doing this. He's hitting the buckshot. He's cooking early. Okay. And I said to myself, if they. What a wonderful world. No, I actually said to myself, if they keep the weapon usage sparse, get a chair, break out a table, break out a pair of brass nuts or something like that, stuff you would find underneath the ring. You want to break out a toolbox and have somebody try to hit somebody with a hammer to do the finish, fine. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but fine. I'm going to say right now I'm not a biggest fan of deathmatch wrestling either, but I know there's an audience for it. Here's the thing, though. Deathmatch is what it should be called. Because it's not fucking wrestling. And it's never been wrestling. It wasn't wrestling when Foley and Terry Funk did it. Rest in peace, Terry Funk. But that stuff they did for Onita wasn't wrestling. It put, you know, FMW on a different goddamn level. And Onita put them further into debt because he was a greedy son of a bitch. Again, rest in peace, Terry Funk. But, <clears throat> Khan doesn't know when to slow down. And, I was looking forward to this. And as it went on, I was looking less and less forward to the rest of the show. This is one of the most agonizing and stupid motherfucking matches that I have seen in a long time. And I'm talking pandemic stuff in WWE is on a whole different level. Because that's when they had to experiment. They had to have fans, all that <coughs> pandemic stuff in AEW. This is one of the worst matches of the year. And that's going to be polarizing. I don't really give a shit if anybody gets upset. That is your opinion. Because I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I don't care if people bleed during a goddamn match. I don't care if people use weapons. If you have it in the context of a story, this was a personal built story. You could have had it be hard hitting. 15 minutes, not 30 goddamn minutes. When it... <laughs> Jesus. This was terrible. This was fucking terrible. And I don't care how much hate I get for this. Because, yes, I've been watching wrestling since 1985. Yes, I'm a big wrestling fan. And, yes, I love wrestling. And Hangman, even though he's not my favorite, I appreciate what Hangman has done. I liked how he rose up in, you know, the, uh, in the latter stages of his New Japan run and everything. And was doing halfway decent in the last G1 he was involved in. And the rise of him being world champion, they were trying to do some good. The problem is Hangman, as a person on camera is not interesting. I'm not talking about the person in general. He's been made to <clears throat> seem like an idiot and just a bland fuck. But then he fires up in that promo and I'm looking forward to it. And then they get a freaking chair. They get, okay, they get duct tape. You know what, okay. Man using duct tape, that's fine. And it, it, whatever. But then they get a staple gun. And he staples his kid's artwork to his goddamn face. He, too many pronouns, pal. Sorry, Vince McMahon. But Paige staples his kid's artwork to Swerve's head. 
Swerve is bleeding like crazy. And let me say right now, Swerve better be rewarded with a long championship run. Give him the TNT championship at some point. <laughs> Except you can't do that because Christian's currently the champion. So I don't know. I haven't beat, uh, I would say I haven't beat Orange Cassidy. The problem is, is that title doesn't mean anything. Have him take the title from MJF at this point. It's about the only reward you could give to somebody like Swerve for putting up with this shit. <sighs> One throw. Swerve. He, Cole, Paige, I don't know why I said Cole. Paige has <coughs> Swerve's head over him, and he's laying on the ground, and he's drinking his bloody... <laughs> and I don't care... This pisses people. I know they're tested, and I know, I mean, nobody knew about bloodborne diseases back in the 70s and the 80s. You had the original Sheik, and that's what, then again, that was mostly in the 70s and stuff like that, and Abdul the Butcher and all that. And I get it. If there's an audience for this, fine. There are people that call this the match of the night, and that's fine. It's your opinion. You're welcome to have it. But... Yeah, he just he's stapling he's stapling stuff to Swerve. He's drinking his blood. A barbed wire chair. This is repulsive. This is garbage. Shad Khan should pull the funding, is what I actually said. A DVD on a cinder block. Why? Why? Yeah, it's a, it was such a powdery block. I'm sure powdery blocks were around a ton backstage. Swerve was bleeding a ton. I hope Swerve is all right. I hope Hangman's all right. Because Hangman was bleeding in a, a barbed wire chair, a tombstone on the barbed wire chair, because it's garbage. Because it's all garbage. This match made me not want to watch Swerve again, and I love Swerve. Now, I will come out of that feeling and everything. I'm just mad now because of this repulsive bullshit. And it's repulsive not because blood. I don't care about blood. I care about the visual of having a match and you have stuff surrounding it that makes it feel personal. This wasn't because, oh, you invaded my home and I'm going to beat your ass. No, we're just going to have this GCW shit, which GCW is garbage championship wrestling, by the way, run by an idiot. They ran two shows in conjunction with a promotion here <coughs> in Seattle that I will not attend any shows for anytime soon. You want to associate yourself with that shit. This goes beyond pro wrestling. This is evolutionary. No, it's de-evolutionary, Nigel. Apparently, you being knocked out of wrestling has rotted your brain. Broken glass and a 450 on it because we've just given up any context of this being a goddamn match. A barbed wire board. Bumps on the board. Brian Cage shows up because this match already wasn't bullshit enough. And a table gets brought out. Why not have a table at this point? Even Excalibur was taking the piss out of this. And then a wire, you know, a wire punch and a wire lariat or buckshot to Brian Cage. And then Prince Nana goes through the table and then a cinder block to Page. And then uh, Swerve hangs Page up by a chain on the post and wins because Page can't respond. And Swerve collapses right after winning. They beat the shit out of each other, but also at the same... While they were hurting each other, they also were making it as funny as possible. This was not wrestling. This was repulsive bullshit. And, yeah, fuck it. Just, just fuck this. F fuck the fact that Tony Khan thought this was a good idea. I can only imagine how the Kia Forum staff felt... And yeah, he had his own staff cleaning up this goddamn thing. But they just put powder around the goddamn thing. They only gave him about five minutes to clean up this goddamn thing. So let's mop and put powder down and everything and hope nobody slips and snaps their ankle. <clears throat> so yeah. <clears throat> Golden Jets of Omega and Jericho took on the Bucks. It's the power of friendship. The Elite battling over friendship and the Bucks are upset. Jericho can't go anymore. Omega was torn. Looked like he was going to hit Jericho, hit the V-trigger on one of the Bucks, and hit the Sephiroth special, the one wing Angel, one, two, three. The Bucks throw a tantrum straight out of the Chris Jericho 1998 playbook, and that's all I have to say about that match. Cole makes his entrance at 817. Jay White soon after that. Now, I'm on the West Coast, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um... MJF stole the ambulance because Ubers apparently are really expensive. Uh, commandeering... Uh, Medical vehicle. I think it's a felony. I think that is, but whatever. 
He limps to the ring. The staff is trying to stop MJF from getting in the ring. But not Adam Cole, who literally just had surgery. Now, MJF versus um, Jay White, AEW World Championship. If this had gone 10 minutes, I think it would have been fine. It would have at least made sense. You could have Jay White beat down, MJ, or beat MJF down, MJF get a few spots. You could do one little thing with Cole, and then you could go home. 30 minutes. 30 goddamn minutes for this. Jay White is one of the most boring fucking wrestlers out there. And I'm not saying that people can't be fans of him. You can be fans of him all you want. I appreciate when he's put on good matches. But this was 30 goddamn minutes. Who can MJF beat now that he could not beat... Or who could Jay White beat now that he couldn't beat MJF? That's what I meant to say. How, I, I mean, I'm all for fighting back and everything, and it would have worked if you had cut this in a third. But... Jay kept taunting Adam Cole, baby. MJF, you know, comes back, sells, hits the kangaroo kick. And the announcer's table collapses. And MJF still says, I'm going to do an elbow drop and basically shatter my hip on the floor. Credit to him. I wouldn't want to do that, but he's a hell of a goddamn wrestling legend. In the making, at least. Um, Super Yurinagi to for two. 20 minutes. The injury was completely negated by this point, even though MJF's really good at selling. And then they teased the stoppage, by the way. Um, the guns got kicked out early on. I should have mentioned that. Um, and they teased the stoppage because MJF, his knee was hurt. He hit a cutter to the floor just before this. That was a cool spot, and had it been the go-home spot, that would have been fine. But then a figure four, Cole has a towel, shades of 2019 when the towel got thrown in and Cody lost to Jericho and then MJF turned. Curse your sudden and obvious betrayal. <laughs> a rope break, a belt shot, and the referee is out of position, but two count. And then a ref bump. Then the guns come back out. And then ring shots. And then MJF finally hits a ring shot. One, two, three. A full year as champion, but at what cost? I don't know if I'm going to review World's End, guys. I don't know if I'm going to. I, I might just, that might be the first AEW pay-per-view I miss. This was, this had some good moments, and it was just draining. I mean, I'm sorry. If you think this is one of the best pay-per-views they've done, fine. Me? No. There were good moments, and then there was just shit where it's like they just stretched out everything, and I can only imagine how many you know, powder bricks were used by Tony Khan backstage. I mean, because at this point, there's no other excuse. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.